Hello and welcome back to Aprons On. My name's Andrew. This week's recipe is a good old standby for cold weather and that is cottage pie. What is cottage pie exactly? Well, cottage pie is a shepherd's pie, but instead of being made with lamb, it's made with beef. So this particular recipe is designed to be really fast and easy to make. Uh, you don't need any specialized techniques. This is a great beginner's dish. If you're new to the kitchen and you want something that you're pretty much guaranteed to blow everybody out of the water with, give this cottage pie a go. So let's get our ingredients assembled, take a look at them and start cooking. As you can see, very, very simple. One tablespoon of each of cracked black pepper, salt, thyme, and basil. We've got two pounds of frozen mixed veg, some cheese of your choice. This happens to be Parmesan because it's what I had in the fridge, but you can also use just normal grated cheddar cheese from the supermarket is just fine. We've got three onions, a stick of unsalted butter, the all important Lee and Perrins Worcestershire sauce, a quart or one liter of milk. We've got our four pounds of meat and we've also got our instant mash. Yes, mum, I'm sorry, I should not be using instant mashed potatoes, but this recipe is designed to be really, really quick and it just makes sense for this kind of recipe. Of course, if you, if you wanna forego the instant mash and go the old school route, if you're comfortable doing that, then by all means, peel, boil, mash your own spuds. But like I said at the beginning and in my introduction, my recipes are, are aimed at people that are maybe just beginning to venture into the kitchen. And let's build our confidence on something really simple and then build on that. So go ahead and set your oven to 400 Fahrenheit 200 degrees Celsius or gas mark six. So before we dive in and start cooking then, I'd like to spend a minute just talking about what I'm gonna be cooking it in. I'm gonna be using this old 13 inch cast iron skillet. These things are great. They're so durable and over time they get a lovely non-stick um, layer of seasoning on them. If you don't have one of these, it's not a big deal at all. You can just use your, this is my little cheapest chips. I think this was like five bucks at Walmart. And surprisingly enough, it has remained nonstick a lot longer than any of the expensive nonstick pans I ever bought. But you can use one of these to do your onions and brown your meat off. And then you can just put it into a casserole dish like this. And this is what you'll actually put in the oven and put your um, mashed potato on. So, no big deal if you don't have a big cast iron skillet. Speaking of cast iron, cooking vessels, they're wonderful things. Y you can pick them up at garage sales. You can buy them new, of course, but what's wonderful about them is the more you use them and if you take care of them properly, they develop a, a lovely seasoning and so they become incredibly great non-stick pans. And this old thing, I mean, it goes out to my fire pit. About the only thing you don't want to do is, is try and deglaze it with cold water because then you're, you'll break it. It'll, it'll crack. There's a few things different as far as taking care of them. And I think I'm going to do a, a separate video on how to clean up maybe an old one that you've picked up at a garage sale um, or a junk shop, how to season it and then how to take care of it, because this is definitely not something that you want to put in your dishwasher, because then you'll lose all your seasoning and then you'll, you'll go right back, back to square one. Now when I say seasoning, um, if you're new to cooking, I'm not talking about salt and pepper. The season on a pan is, is that luster that you can see glinting in the light. That is just oil that has gone, as bonded, I suppose, to the cast iron surface through the process of being heated and having food in it, and it just builds up a layer. So while the oven's warming up, we can stick our cast iron skillet on top of the stove and just on a medium heat, just start that warming through. We'll give it a little splash of olive oil, <clears throat> wipe that around. Next, we take our liter of milk, quart of milk, Let's just pour this into a saucepan and into there, we're gonna place our whole stick of butter and a pinch of pepper. 
Okay, we'll put that on a low heat because all we want it to do is melt the butter. What we don't want is for it to boil over because then it makes a heck of a mess and it just sort of ruins your whole day. Okay, our pans are all warmed up. Now what we want to do is chop up these onions. So when you chop your onions off, just take the top off, okay? You'll see at this end, that's the root end. That's the top end. If you take the root end off, it makes it much easier for all the juice to run out of the onion. And it's that stuff that really makes your eyes water. So if you just take the tops off first, then cut them in half, peel that skin off. You'll find lots of videos on YouTube on knife skills. I encourage you to watch some of those. When you're dicing onions, actually one of the key ingredients that will really make it a lot easier is a really, really sharp knife. So to make this into a dice, the first thing we're gonna do then is slice down to that root end like that. Okay, really simple. And for the new guys, I would just be making one cut horizontally towards that root end, just like that. So the root end is holding everything all together. And then fingers back, use your knuckle. And you just slice through the onion. And there you have your, your diced onion. Really pretty simple. The more you do it, the better you'll get. Make sure you use a really sharp knife though. That really is the key. And actually, contrary to what you might think, you're far more likely to cut yourself with a dull knife than you ever are with a sharp one. Okay, let's put our onions into the pan then. We're gonna sweat them down until they just sort of go translucent. We don't need to get them brown and crispy. So while those are in there just doing their thing, we can take our frozen vegetables, put them in a bowl and put them in the microwave. I'm gonna give this six minutes we're not trying to cook them all the way through we just want to defrost them and and it will partially cook them and just speed up the whole process when we get ready to put the pie in the oven so just checking on our onions then this is what you're looking for they just get this lovely shiny pearly sort of look to them we can get our hands a little dirty now we're going to add our spices to our meat so first of all just give them a little bit of a mix and then sprinkle them on the top like that and then you just get your hands in just give that a good stir it doesn't have to be perfect because as it cooks down we're going to be constantly moving it about in the pan anyway so that should do that all right now it's time to put our meat in so we're going to bring the heat up now on high in our pan grab our seasoned meat and just turn that into the skillet and just break this all up now you don't have to make a cottage pie with four pounds of meat if you want you can just make it with two pounds in a smaller skillet or a small casserole dish the nice thing about this recipe is it's really really forgiving so it's a great dish to start your cooking journey on just let that cook through for a bit and we'll check on it periodically what we're looking for here is just to brown the meat. And you'll see as, as it starts to cook through, you see there, it, it gets that different color, that kind of grayish color. And the volume will reduce as well as the fat renders out of the meat. Although this is actually pretty lean. This is 90% uh, lean because we're trying to be healthy. So as you can see, our meat now is exactly where we want it. There's still a few little tiny bits of pink but those will cook through, finish cooking through when they go in the oven. So what I like to do is just take my mixed veg and put them all on the top and spread them out. And it makes, when you cut into this, you'll see it just makes a nice layer. And now for the important Leon Perrin's Worcester sauce. I don't really measure this. I just give it a few good glugs. So, you know, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That should do it. So that should season the whole dish nicely. So this is how we make the spuds. So we've got our milk and melted butter. And to that, we're just gonna add 
we're just going to dump a bunch of it in there. And when I say a bunch, oh, there's probably about two cups, maybe a cup and a half. The, the trick to making potatoes this way is you add a little bit, let it incorporate, and as you can see there, it's still, it's not stiffened up, it's sort of turned into a potato soup. So we can add a little bit more. Oh, that was rather a lot. <clears throat> anyway, the beauty of doing it this way is, if they're too dry, you can add a little bit more milk, even cold milk, it's fine. And if they're too wet, then you just add some more flakes. So our potatoes mixed, and now we're gonna throw the cheese in. So how much cheese? couple of handfuls. What we're going to do is just fold this cheese in. Okay. We're not going to beat it to death. It's actually going to melt like that. And they've actually stiffened up a little bit. So I'm going to add a little bit more liquid, but I found some heavy whipping cream in the fridge that I forgot I had. So we'll just put a bit of that in there. Take a little spoonful, check our seasoning. Now we've added no salt to this, but it needs very, very little. There's a lot of salt in the Parmesan. So we'll just give a healthy pinch of salt and we're good. There she sits, what a beautiful piece of Family nourishment. Now we can add the potato and we're just going to scoop it out of the saucepan in one big chunk and spread it around. You could bake it just like this, but take a table fork and you're just going to do these little just run it across that potato to make these little grooves. Doesn't have to be anything terribly accurate. In fact, you want to rough up that crust because it's those little tram lines that will brown. But that's how we do ours. So now we're gonna pop that in that 400 degree oven. It'll take around 30 minutes. Keep an eye on it because you, you don't want it to get too brown on the top. And we'll come back and we'll check on that in a little bit. So middle of the oven then. What a beautiful thing. We'll check that periodically, but should give it about 30 minutes and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, let's dig into this. Oh, fabulous. There. So there you go then, that's my take on a cottage pie. And you can cook it as it is in the recipe or you can use that recipe as a basis to develop and make it your own. Cottage pies are a lot like chili really. Uh, everybody's got their own version of it. There's not really a right way or a wrong way to make it. This is how my family enjoys it and I hope you all enjoy it too. So before I go then, I've mentioned before that I like to keep my recipes budget friendly and you can buy everything for this meal for around $15 US. So if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe, hit the bell for notifications so that you won't miss any of the, the new recipes when they come out on a weekly basis. I'll have another recipe for you next week 
when we actually go to the Netherlands and explore one of their traditional comfort dishes. So I've got a nice cup of tea. I'll see you next week. Cheers. <laughs>